Working on a YouTube channel that's specifically geared towards retro items can make someone feel, well, old. I saw the line, the world you grew up in doesn't exist anymore, on a post this last week discussing something or other from the 80s, and while it's certainly not my first time hearing that, and it's also kind of a duh statement, for whatever reason it did make me pause for a bit this time around. Because regardless of how trite or perhaps meme attributed that line can be, depending on its usage it is true. For instance, let's talk for a second about Boomerang, the cable channel that is, not the oddly curved Australian stick that I still think involves some sort of black magic to use properly. Boomerang became its own channel in the year 2000 as a spinoff of Cartoon Network, but its origins actually go all the way back to almost the beginning of that channel, where it was originally formed as a programming block of Cartoon Network, very similar to how Adult Swim would eventually form a few years later with the purpose of Boomerang being to show older cartoons that Turner Broadcasting had rights to that might appeal more to older audiences that had grown up with those cartoons after the kids had gone to bed. While some of those cartoons were classic Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes, and Merry Melodies, a large chunk of those were from Hanna-Barbera, featuring titles like The Flintstones, The Jetsons, and Scooby-Doo. But today's game features a character that is even older than all that, and as such, isn't quite as recognizable these days. However, I should probably pause for a second because I'm sure that there's some of you out there that don't know me and are thoroughly confused as to why I'm talking about Cartoon Network programming blocks that don't involve anthropomorphic fast food items, or that got here due to searching for baseball catchers that had a knack for saying really odd things. Hi, my name is Dave, and welcome to Zylogamoto, the channel where rather than try to discuss the greatness of the 1961 Yankees or Space Ghost Coast to Coast, I'm actually instead out to collect and review the nearly 1,280 titles released in the English language for the Sega Master System, Genesis slash Mega Drive, Sega or Mega CD as the case may be, and finally the 32X. Basically, if I can plug it into a Genesis either by itself or with some sort of add-on, and be able to read what's on the screen, I'm trying to get a copy of it and review it for posterity, with both looks at that original packaging and gameplay captured from original hardware whenever possible. Now, as you probably got from the title of the video, this week's review is for Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers, for not the Sega Genesis, but the Mega Drive, as it's a European exclusive. And to finish my point from earlier, it's possible that if you're watching this video in 2024 or beyond, that you don't know who Yogi Bear is, simply due to the age of the character. Yogi Bear actually made his debut in 1958 on the Huckleberry Hound Show, another aged Hanna-Barbera character that has been somewhat forgotten over the years, before becoming a hit in his own right and getting his own show in 1961. Regardless of who is still familiar with the character today, and I've got to admit, the feature film bearing his name did do decent business in 2010, and technically Yogi is part of the cast of the show Jellystone, which currently airs on Max, which I didn't even know existed until writing this review, the game is not exactly well known, and if you don't believe me, go check the Sega Retro page about it. Yep, you get a whole one line describing the game. So this will certainly be an interesting experience, as I'm going into this review knowing almost nothing about the game, but before we get to that, our customary look at the package. And here is my copy of Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers. This particular copy is a relatively recent addition to the collection, as I think I picked it up in 2023 at some point, in an eBay order with some other European exclusives. From the outside, this copy has definitely seen some use, but it's held up well, and the hang tab is intact at the top. Thankfully, that outer cover has done its job, and the inner cover is fully intact with no sun bleaching, water damage, or edge wear. With it being a European exclusive, if you're looking to pick up a copy in the United States, it's going to cost you a little bit, with the cost of the game itself coming out to at least $40 right now, and then you're going to want to add at least in another $15 on top of that for shipping. Personally, I try to save up and purchase European titles at least four or five at a time to at least save something on that shipping charge, which has been ridiculous since the pandemic, but depending on the game, that's obviously not always an option. With this being a European exclusive, and I should point out it is a true European exclusive, 
with it not even getting a Brazilian release later on, there's no other cover art to compare it to, as this is all we got. At least on the Sega side of the house anyway, that is, because the game was also ported to the Super Nintendo, where it got releases in all three major regions, including a name change for the US version where it's now known as Adventures of Yogi Bear instead, or just Yogi Bear in Japan. The European and Japanese versions on the Super Nintendo got similar artwork to what we got on the Mega Drive, but the North American version has totally different art to go with the new name. I don't think I really have a preference in art between the two, with the artwork on Adventures of Yogi Bear being more colorful, but cartoon capers featuring Boo Boo and Ranger Smith. But I definitely do prefer the name Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers due to the fact that, frankly, Adventures of Yogi Bear is pretty boring. I mean, how many times has there been a title of something with just Adventures tagged on to the beginning, and for whatever reason, not having a V at the beginning of Adventures of Yogi Bear is like nails on a chalkboard. It just doesn't sound correct. Flipping over the back, and we've got two somewhat blurry screenshots of the game in the upper right hand corner, to the point where it took me about 15 seconds to make out where Yogi actually was in that first one. Not exactly what you want, especially in a release from late 1994. After that, there's breakdowns of the game in five languages, which is less than what was frequently seen on European releases, but still using what appears to be either 6 or 8 point font, so you'll need to get out your magnifying glasses for this one. However, I do have to give them credit, usually on these there's only a brief description of the game, but they also got some bullet points in here, and I'm definitely curious to see what 20 exciting and taxing levels, 200 screens of action, and 300 frames of animation actually looks like. It certainly sounds impressive, but who knows what any of those numbers actually mean without actually playing the game. Opening up the package, and unfortunately the cartridge label and the holder for the cartridge has a bit of wear, but the manual is in good shape. It's in landscape format, just like European releases usually are, and thankfully they get the memo about giving each language its own section, rather than splitting up the pages. The manual keeps things brief due to having to cover five languages, but they did try to explain things and include a few pictures, but like the screenshots on the back, they're mostly pretty rough and blurry, with of course being in black and white not helping either. The game appears to be a pretty simple platformer, so unfortunately without having more in-depth breakdown of things like the different areas, or perhaps some of the enemies you'll be up against, or maybe something really important like how the continues work, or maybe the fast food fiasco bonus stage between worlds, it's not really of much use, but I suppose it's better than nothing. Okay, that's the package. Let's get into the game and see what these adventures, er, uh, capers, are all about. I'm going to start off this review with a philosophical question. What's worse, being objectively a poor effort, or being a game that's so generic and bland that it does nothing interesting and is almost immediately forgettable? The logical answer would be a poor effort, because even if it's a notable title due to being infamous, all you really have is something that is well known for being bad. A good example of this would be Rise of the Robots, a game that, sure, is still being talked about 30 years after its release, but it's almost universally discussed in a bad way. And if for some reason you missed the boat on that discussion, go ahead and give episode 61 a look, as thankfully I've already covered it and gotten it out of the way. But then there's the other side of that equation. What about all those games that over the years have simply been forgotten about as time moved on because they didn't manage to stand out in any way. They're the vanilla ice cream of the library, but not even the good vanilla ice cream. I'm talking about the cheap, nameless brand that's sold in giant plastic tubs designed to be taken to picnics or kids' birthday parties, but not necessarily enjoyed on its own as it's more of a placeholder because you have to have ice cream, but the quality is insignificant due to everything else that's going on. And I want to be clear, not every game that I give two star ratings to, which is what I kind of consider the bar for an average game, fits that mold. Many of those games are actually good ideas with original concepts and interesting stories or play mechanics, but they just happen to be flawed in some way that ends up bringing their score down. 
No, what I'm talking about here are games that simply bring nothing new to the table. And they don't specifically do anything wrong, but they don't really do anything right either. And after playing them, the impression left is quickly worn off as you move on to the next thing. Well, with all that preamble, you're probably expecting me to say that Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers falls into that category. And honestly, based on its write-up, or lack thereof, on Sega Retro, it seems that I'm probably not the only person with that opinion, as clearly other people haven't cared enough about the game to document it, and this is further backed up by the fact that this is one of the games on GameFAQs that is sans fac for either the Mega Drive or Super Nintendo version. Although its cheat codes are listed at least. But it's way too easy to just dismiss Yogi Bear as a title to ignore, and seeing as how the whole point of Zalagamoto is to review every game in this catalog, whether people care about it or not, I'm going to at least try to give it a fair shake here, and we'll see where things end up. Having said that, let's start out with exactly what Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers is. As best I can tell, the Mega Drive version was released at some point in late 1994, and I say as best I can tell because Moby Games, Sega Retro, and Wikipedia all agree that they all know that it was released sometime in 1994, and that's about it. Technically, the ROM header for the cartridge states that it's from January of 1995, so I think what I'm trying to say here is that your guess is as good as mine. The game was developed by a company called Blue Turtle, and if you haven't heard of them, don't be surprised, because it appears they only worked on eight releases in their history, and the only other game that they worked on for the Mega Drive was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, a game that, while I haven't actually played it personally, doesn't exactly have the greatest reputation. Also appears that Yogi Bear was the last game that Blue Turtle ever developed before shutting their doors, which is definitely an ominous sign, and could be part of why the game isn't more well known. But that's enough background info, what about the actual game? Well it seems like one of the easier genres to drop a licensed property into is a platformer, and that's exactly what we have here. A, and I'm going to borrow a phrase here that I think I'm using correctly, a bog standard platformer. For those of you that are not familiar with that term, basically Yogi Bear appears to be any 16-bit platformer that you've ever played, but with absolutely no frills. It's Yogi Bear walking from left to right across 20 levels in five distinct areas on a mission to stop developers from polluting and destroying Jellystone Park. And honestly, that's about it, which is where the problems start. Granted, with the game being named Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers, you'd expect Yogi Bear to be the star of the game, and he is. But usually a Yogi Bear cartoon would involve a few other characters, namely Boo Boo, Ranger Smith, and to a lesser extent, Yogi's girlfriend Cindy Bear. However, for the most part, those characters are absent from the proceedings, and it's just the Yogi show. Cindy isn't included at all, and Boo Boo and Ranger Smith's presence is limited to just a voice sample at the beginning of the game, the picture that's displayed at the end, assuming you make it that far, and then in the bonus level that appears between the different areas of Jellystone, Fast Food Fiasco. More on that in a bit. Now, with only four main characters, I get that perhaps the developers didn't have a ton to work with, but even still, Boo Boo and Ranger Smith's presence is integral to every Yogi Bear cartoon, so to have them included in such a small way makes the game feel like it could have been about just any generic bear going through the levels, and they just happened to slap the Yogi Bear license on top. I suppose in their defense, sleeping, collecting picnic baskets, and eating are all focuses of the game, so it's not like they ignored the character, just the rest of the show. One of the larger problems with the game is that it simply isn't exciting, or for a game that's based on a joke-filled cartoon, it's not humorous at all. And I understand that it can be tough to make a game from the 16-bit era funny, with the lack of voice acting and all, but I mean, even if they couldn't figure out a way to work it into the gameplay, they could have at least thrown some screens in between the levels, to not only progress the plot, but maybe also have a quick joke. But instead, there's no segue, it's just off to the next level. As far as not being exciting goes, I mean, that might not be a totally fair statement, as there definitely are some times during gameplay when you're trying to avoid dying by making a specific jump, 
or perhaps the sequences when you're riding in the minecar, but those are definitely the exception to the norm. For the most part, Yogi is walking along, collecting picnic baskets, clocks, and flower or light indicators that show when Yogi is past them, all while jumping from various platforms and jumping on other animals' heads, rinse and repeat for 20 levels. If you're trying to collect a lot of those three main items, which only serve to grant more points at the end of the level, or time in the bonus level, you'll end up spending most of your time going back through parts of the level that you've already passed through, just at different altitudes, as the levels will have multiple paths to go through. The action never changes, and Yogi doesn't either, with Yogi ultimately only being able to move left and right, duck, and jump, meaning that you're using a grand total of one button on the controller. And before you point out, I know that Sonic games tend to only be played with just one button as well, but let's be honest, Sonic does have a few more moves at his disposal than Yogi. There's no power-ups, nothing to climb like ladders or ropes, and no bosses, with the explanation given that actually all of the animals are technically Yogi's friends, and he's only bopping them on the head so that he doesn't have to give them a piece of his cake, because if he gives away all of his cake, he loses a life. And I'm not kidding, that explanation actually comes straight from the manual. I should probably discuss that health meter and the life continue system in general, because it's interesting and not necessarily in a good way. As mentioned, each of Yogi's lives is represented with a cake, made up of a certain number of pieces. However, unless you're just not very good at platformers, you end up with more than enough pieces to get through any level, and each level has extra pieces that you can collect, and if you're quick, you can grab that piece that you lost back before it disappears, a la the rings in Sonic. And if you finish a level, you get all your pieces back anyway. No, the, the real danger in the game is falling into pits, and despite the fact that the game actually has very tight controls, which the developers should get some credit for, you're probably going to fall a few times, especially due to how closely zoomed in the camera is, and the fact that Yogi can't move the screen around, making it impossible to see what's underneath him, and if there's a platform to land on or not. It is technically possible to earn extra lives, and continues, but both are probably more difficult than they should be. The fast food fiasco minigame between the five areas in the game will grant you an extra life if you catch all of the food that Boo Boo throws at you, but you have to be perfect, which usually means catching at least 20 food items, all while avoiding Ranger Smith. Not an easy task. Then there's the continues, which require you to collect four pieces of an alarm clock from special dream levels in each level. However, it's not a matter of just collecting four pieces over the course of the game. Oh no, you have to collect four pieces from each of the four levels in a certain area. And good luck even finding the special dream levels in each level, much less actually completing them. Let's move on to something more positive, the game's graphics. The back of the box advertised over 300 frames of animation, and I think that's probably accurate when you take into consideration both Yogi and all of the different woodland creatures. The game is animated very well, and while I'd have to go back and do a side-by-side -side comparison to be sure, my gut reaction is that the animation was actually more impressive here than in Garfield Caught in the Act, which is saying something considering that Garfield is twice the size of Yogi Bear. Now, this could also be due to me having higher expectations for Garfield as well, as opposed to none for Yogi Bear. The sprites for all the characters in the game are pretty large for Genesis standards, which goes along with the game feeling more zoomed in than something like Sonic or Mario Brothers. And not only are they well drawn, they along with the level backgrounds all have a good use of color and detail. The sound unfortunately doesn't hold up as well as the graphics. It's not bad, mind you, and in fact, I'd say the background music sounds fine. It's just not terribly interesting, and you're going to be hearing the same background music for every level that's part of an area, so it can be a bit old hearing the same tune for the 20-25 to 25 minutes in a row that it takes you to get through a certain area. The sound effects, like the music, are fine and serviceable, but they don't really do a whole lot, and there doesn't seem to be that many of them. I mean, would it have killed them to at least include some speech samples of Yogi saying something? I mean, if they added that one sample of Ranger Smith in the intro, I mean, clearly they had the tech for it. Definitely a missed opportunity, as this could have been a way to add in some humor from the cartoon that I mentioned before. 
I started out the review by discussing that philosophical question of, is it worse for the game to be bad or forgettable? And I think after spending some time with Yogi Bear, I am going to go along with the logical answer in that it's ultimately worse for it to be a bad game. Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers is technically proficient in some areas, and it's clear that the developers were able to make a good looking and sounding game, and a game that controls well, something that cannot be understated when it comes to platformers. It's just boring. There's nothing here that makes me want to continue to play the game and deal with its flaws, and it should be noted that the game really should have looked and sounded good considering how late it was released in the lifespan of the Mega Drive. As a result, I'm giving Yogi Bear a begrudging two stars, because while it's not specifically a bad game, it's not a good game either, and after playing it, I completely understand why it's not more well known. Okay, and that is it for Yogi Bear Cartoon Capers. This is a great example of a game where it's simply not enough to go through the motions, even if you're technically proficient at going through the motions. And there are things that I do like here. For instance, the fact that enemies don't return after you defeat them, even if you leave that particular screen and come back. That's fantastic, and it's something that I wish all platformers did. Also, the idea behind having markers on the level that have the dual function of not only letting you know where you've been, but also giving you something else to collect for points is something that I think is pretty original, and I definitely can't remember any other platformer having a feature like that, or at least not in the same scope that Yogi Bear has anyway. Unfortunately, it's just a yawn fest for me, and I think this is something that I'd probably only recommend to someone that is a huge platformer fan. Now, if you happen to be a platformer aficionado like that and you live in the United States and you want to try this game out, I do have good news for you, as even though the game was released in PAL territories, it's actually designed to run in NTSC mode, meaning that you'll have no problems running it on a stock Genesis, so that's nice, I suppose. Next time on Zalgamoto, I'm actually not sure what game is coming next. And that's not me trying to be mysterious and bury some clue in here for next week. I really legitimately don't know what game I'm reviewing next because I've got two Master System titles on the backlog that I was supposed to review a while back, but I haven't gotten around to them yet because I didn't actually have copies of them. But they're both in transit, so I guess it's going to come down to if I receive either of them in time, and if not, I do have a few other great options for review instead. Well, that's it for Zalgamoto episode 241. If you liked what you saw here and want to see more, please think about liking and subscribing if you're so inclined, as it will help more people see these videos. But most importantly, whatever you like to play, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Later!